Hey guys, I'm Elizabeth McCravey, a website designer and business coach for entrepreneurs and your host for the Breakthrough Brand Podcast, the show that's all about pulling back the curtain on how to actually build a successful business. I don't skim the surface around here. If you want a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what it takes to run a successful business and stand out in a crowd, you're in the right place. After creating a multiple six figure a year website design business in my twenties, I'm ready to share everything I've learned and everything I'm still learning because I believe the keys to building a thriving business should never be a secret. Here you'll find episodes that are actionable, direct, and fun, like French chatting business over coffee and a fresh, honest take on the reality of being an entrepreneur. If you're ready to master online marketing, branding, website design, mindset, and business strategy, then this is the podcast for you. It's time to build your breakthrough brand. Let's do this. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. I have what I think will be a really short, but also really like action packed sort of episode for you guys. Um, I had the idea come to me this morning while I was packing and preparing to for our first team meeting back since I had been on maternity leave. So first time having a chat with Abby and Stacy, and um, I actually was like packing the book that I'm going to be referencing today. And I unpacked it and I was like, no, I want to talk about this thing that happened to me, this rude email we got during the Black Friday sale on the podcast, because I think there's a good little lesson for all of us in that. So I'm going to record this for you guys real quick. And I have Colin right now looking so cute on his bank baby monitor watching him while he sleeps um, directly in front of me next to this podcast outline. So that's my life right now as a new mom recording a podcast for you guys. Okay, so let me tell you what we're talking about today. So I want to talk about how and why you shouldn't create a business that attracts everyone, why you shouldn't create products that are the quote unquote, right fit for everybody. And like I said, me talking about this is inspired by a funny and very rude email two emails actually that I got from this dude who was on my email list during my Black Friday sale. And it was in response to one of the emails that went out um, during Black Friday, promoting the sale, promoting the templates, all of that. So let me tell you what happened. So some guy named Mark responded to the email that went out on Wednesday talking about the sale. Um, and he all he responded was he said in all caps, expensive and very average. That was it. That was all it said. It's expensive and very average in all caps. I'm actually going to share a screenshot of the email um, on Instagram when this episode airs. So if you want to see it today, just go over to my Instagram account and look at it. I'll talk about this episode there as well. Um, so that's all it said. And then our autoresponder that we had on for the sale responded to his rude email with a really kind message saying like, hey, we're taking off some time for the holiday, but we'll get back to you. And here's some like links that could be helpful. And he responded to that in all caps with piss off. And um, we never replied. Instead, I just kindly removed him from his email list. And me and Stacy kind of tagged each other a little bit on and they're like, wow, look at this guy. That's really rude. Um, and that was kind of it for, for that communication with him. But let me tell you, when I first read that email that said expensive and very average, referring to the product I've been offering for years now, um, that's been really the product of website templates have been sold to um, over a thousand customers at this point. It's built a really successful business from it. But I still was like, dang, that's cold. And it hurt a little, um, right? I'm human, but that hurt. I was like, oh, um, that hurts. And my curious self attempted to look this guy up on Instagram because I did have his first and last name from his email and his email, it was a little Gmail address, but kind of tell me a little bit about him. And I can't remember now looking back what business he had, but I do remember I looked him up on Instagram, I Googled him and I couldn't tell if he owned a business or not, but I could tell that he was an older man, possibly an engineer um, who possibly didn't even own a business and posted a lot of strange things on Instagram, in my opinion. And he didn't seem like my ideal customer whatsoever. I'm not sure how he got on my email list. And if you're thinking like, man, maybe your Facebook ad targeting is bad right now. I actually hadn't been running ads for a while at the time it happened. And then we got actually, side note, another weird email this morning um, in response again to an email that went out where the person, it was a man that said, hi, want to meet up. And the answer is we are blocking you and reporting this as spam. But anyway, that's that's the other weird email we've gotten recently. But the point is, um, no matter what, this older man who wound up on my email list wanted me to know that he thinks my website, Tim, was are expensive and very average. Um, which leads me to what I want to talk to you about today, which is your offers and your products. 
So an offer that suits everyone, that's the right price for everyone, the right color, the right look, all the right things for every single person who comes in contact with it is actually an offer for no one. So if everyone agrees it's perfect, it's it's just, just right for everyone. It's probably boring. And you can't build a successful business creating stuff that every single person who comes into contact with your business will like. Um, that's why we talk about things like having an ideal customer avatar and things like that. It's this concept, like we we don't want to build a business that's just like, hello, masses, let me make something that's perfect for every single person here. So with my templates, we're all black, white and gray with maybe generic stock images, no filler copy, um, maybe a much lower price point or free even then maybe this guy wouldn't have found them so offensive. But that product doesn't sell. It's boring and boring's already been done. And you cannot build a successful business on boring hear that again. You can't build a successful business on boring. And I think I may have mentioned this on the podcast before for you longtime listeners. I know I have a blog post about this that I should have looked at before recording because I might actually have just come up with a lot of the same things to say as that blog post. But um, one of my favorite marketing books, I actually have it sitting right in front of me on my desk, is Purple Cow by Seth Godin. And he talks about this. And I love the way he explains that I read this book, gosh, like five years ago now or so. And this part of it, this case study, and it stuck with me since then. And he uses ice cream as the example to talk about this of not compromising your offer. So I'm going to read you guys what he says directly from the book. If you have the book and you want to reference this later, it's on page 107 of like the print copy. So he says, Vanilla is a compromise ice cream flavor, while habanero pecan is not. While there may be just a few people who are unwilling to eat vanilla ice cream, there are legions of people who are allergic to nuts, sensitive to spicy food, or just plain uninterested in eating a challenging scoop of ice cream. The safe compromise choice for a kid's birthday party is vanilla. But vanilla is boring. You can't build a fast growing company around vanilla. In almost every market, the boring slot is filled. The product design to appeal to the largest possible audience already exists and displacing it is awfully difficult. Um, now, I'll keep reading the rest of that in a moment, but I just love what he says there, um, comparing vanilla ice cream to the flavor habanero pecan ice cream. So before you say, I actually love vanilla, it's my favorite flavor, and I'd pick it over everything else all the time. Um, here's what I think about that. Everyone likes vanilla, right? But most of the time, no one is obsessed with vanilla, like he's saying. Maybe you are, that's a special vanilla, like maybe it's your mom's homemade vanilla ice cream in the ice cream maker. Or maybe it's a cool vanilla ice cream with a little twist to it, something special done to it. Kind of like what Jenny's ice cream, if y'all have ever been there, I, that's one of my favorite ice cream shops, but how they do with all their ice cream, they do like interesting things with them, right? But no one is a super fan of vanilla ice cream, but we all want to build businesses with super fans, right? Um, that's such a huge goal. Um, and a great way to build your company. So having those customers who tell you that they want to buy everything you create, the people who listen to every podcast, or they read every blog post, or they watch every Instagram story, it's amazing. Um, and I'm grateful for those of you who are super fans of my business. And if you have those kind of fans in your own business, then I'm sure you understand that like, it's amazing. Um, and you don't build the type of business that has super fans by being generic, by creating bland offers and bland products, or by trying to create content that every single person is going to love. Your stuff has to be right for some people and not right for other people like habanero pecan ice cream. So how do you be too something for some people, but just right for the right people? I want to keep reading. It's just like one more sentence um, from Seth Godin's book to kind of complete this idea here. So Here's what he says. The real growth comes with products that annoy, offend, don't appeal, are too expensive, too cheap, too heavy, too complicated, too simple, too something. Of course, they're too, too something for some people, but just perfect for others. Hear that last part. It's too something for some people, right? But just perfect for the just right people. Um, so don't be afraid to get specific. Um, a great example that I think of um, when I think about this part in Purple Cow about not compromising in your offers and in your business 
A way I did this in my business, I created a course called Booked Out Designer, not Booked Out Business Owner, not Booked Out Service Provider, not like Booked Out Anyone Who's Interested in Buying This Course From Me. Um, and by doing that, I was able to get really specific in the marketing for the product, but also in the way I taught the course, because if I was trying to generalize the information to every single person who offers a service all the way from an accountant to a photographer to a cake baker to a designer, um, it would have seemed a lot different, but I was able to get really specific and not generic to not make content that works for everybody, but that works specifically for designers, Um, which means that I made a course that even though I love all of you listening, it might not be the right fit for you. And that's absolutely okay. You don't have to make products that are the right fit for every single person. And I can actually create other things that are a right fit for those people who are service providers, but not designers, or they have online shops that are not designers. And I do want to do that, right? Um, I have plenty of course plans for the new year and for the future of my business that are going to be um, for that audience. Um, But I was able to make really useful and specific content by getting specific in booked out designer and not going generic. And I think that was a huge win and something I actually did struggle with at the time of making that decision. I was like, Oh, I kind of want to make it for everyone. But then I noticed as I was like outlining what's going to be in the course, that if I made it for every single person, uh, I was going to have to like change up how useful the information was going to be basically. So here's what I want to leave you with. I want you to ask yourself today, how can you you be to something today. So maybe that means posting the Instagram post that might really get the attention of the person you want to work with, but that some people are just simply not going to get or are not going to be interested in. Maybe that's designing a website for yourself that's truly going to appeal to your target audience, but might repel some people. Someone might land on it and be like, I don't like this. Um, And that's okay. Uh, Maybe that means sending an email to your email list that really speaks to the heart of your ideal client's problems, but might confuse someone who doesn't get it and who isn't right for your business and what you're offering. It could mean a variety of things. Maybe it means getting really specific with the course you're working on or the offer or product or service you're wanting to create getting specific um, and not generic, like I was saying. So just ask yourself, how can you be to something for someone today and not create offers that are just right for everyone? And that's it. Um, Again, this is a really short episode, but I just felt like I needed to talk about this of like, Um, thinking about how like, hey, like I got a mean email, but my offer is not right for this dude who sent it. Um, So that's my reminder for you about your own marketing based on the rude email we got during our Black Friday sale. And let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know if you're gonna um, try to be to something today. Um, Send me a DM on Instagram or share this podcast. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll be back next week with another episode and cheers to recording a short episode right now because Colin is still sleeping as cute as can be in his crib on my monitor. So um, that's been great. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast today and for staying until the end. I appreciate you being here. And if you enjoyed this episode, then I want to invite you to check out my online course and coaching program for designers, Booked Out Designer. In this program, I teach you how to build a successful in-demand booked out business as a designer. You'll learn everything from the exact experience I take my clients through to things like figuring out your niche, mastering discovery calls, pricing your services for profit, creating contracts that will not call you legal troubles and my exact social media strategies to book clients. You even get to watch recordings of me in actual meetings with my actual clients so you can really learn through what you're seeing. We take things you're learning on this podcast and so many topics I never even cover on the show and deep dive into them. So in addition to the amazing course, the course is nine modules of teaching with over 90 lessons. You get group coaching calls with me and access to an exclusive Facebook community of designers just like you. And fun fact, this isn't one of those kind of Facebook groups where the founder never comments on posts or you never see them in there. You'll find me there all the time ready to help you out with any business question you have. 
So to get info on the course and to see when the doors will be opening again, head to elizabethmccravey.com slash BOD, short for Booked Out Designer. I hope to be able to coach you and teach you inside of the course soon. And don't forget that you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode. And a great way to support the show is to leave a rating and review, share it with a friend, share it on social media. All of that will help get the word out. All right, I'll see you again next week. Week.